This is a recipe for a stout using a malt extract and it's also got a bit of partial grains on it so it gives you a little bit of an introduction into how to uh, convert an extract recipe to add some additional grains and enhance the flavours. All the ingredients for this were kindly provided by Great Expectations and you can pick up all the ingredients at Great Expectations as well. Actually the beer that's featured in this video is on keg at Great Expectations and if you talk really nicely to Bill and Phil you might be able to get a tasting of it when you go in to pick up your stuff. Normally grains just need to be crushed. Now your brew supplier normally has a crusher there when you buy the grains so that you can have them crushed up. If not, you can do what I'm doing now and it's putting them into a coffee grinder or a mill just to crush them down. Now it doesn't matter that they're being crushed down to a fine powder and the stout is going to absorb all those flavours anyway. If you were doing a pale ale, however, you wouldn't want to crush it down to this fine powder. You just want to crush it so that the husks were still intact. The easy method for incorporating a partial grain into your extract brew is to use a boil in the bag. When we use a boil in a bag, we crush the grains, put them in the bag, and then steep them at a temperature to extract out all the sugars. When grains are steeped, you want to steep them in a temperature between 68 and 78 degrees. For this recipe, I'm using 68 degrees, and what it's going to do is activate the enzymes in the grains and convert the proteins into sugars that can be fermented. Rest the bag in the pot and leave it for 60 minutes. What we're making here is the wort that's going to be fermented into beer. Make sure that you get everything that you're going to be using sterilised and sanitised because the worst thing that you want is to get an infection in the beer. So keep your lid on the fermenter and make sure that you have an environment cleaning everything and sanitising everything that you use. I use I defer or star sands to clean anything. It means that I don't have to rinse it afterwards. I can just pull it out of the sanitizer and start using it straight away. After your grains are steeped for about 60 minutes, pull the bag out and slowly twist it to try and get as much of the moisture out as possible. Don't squeeze the bag, you don't need to get it all out, you just want to get some of the drips that are left over so that you can move the bag out of the way and continue on with the process. Now turn your pot back onto the boil because now what we want to do is add the dry malt extract and slowly stir it in to make sure it gets dissolved. The dry malt extract is very water absorbent so as soon as it hits steam it's going to start to clog up so be aware that there's going to be some little lumps and bits and pieces so just pour it slowly into the pot and as you go make sure that all gets dissolved up. Let it boil for 60 minutes just on a rolling boil and what we're doing is we're killing any germs that are in there and making sure that it's nice and sterile and we're also mixing all the flavours and getting those proteins and the sugars all converted properly. Now open up your liquid malt extract and pour it into the fermenter. Now this stuff is really sticky and it takes a long time to get it all out of the tin. What I suggest you do is pour a little bit of boiling water in, into it afterwards, give it a swish around and try and dissolve as much of that as you can and tip it back into the fermenter when you're finished. Now grab your boiled wort and tip the whole lot into the fermenter. We really want to mix it up well so that everything is combined. With cold water. Just a bit of stirring it. The temperature of this wort is not going to be the ideal temperature for putting yeast in at the moment. So what we need to do is we need to bring the temperature down to 24 degrees and we do that just by topping it up with cold fresh water. Note that the fish tank temperature gauges don't give an accurate reading of the actual temperature. They take a little bit of time to get the right temperature to display. 
That's why I use a thermometer so that I know what the temperature is right away. Now for the magic ingredient. Add a licorice stick and that helps add flavour to the stout. You can start to play around with this as you play with batches by adding in some star aniseed or even some treacle. It's just to add some complexity to the stout. At this stage we want to take our original gravity of the wort so that we can calculate what our final alcohol content is going to be in the stout. I use a sterilised turkey baster to pull wort out of the fermenter and to fill up my test tube. The turkey baster has never been used as a turkey baster. I specifically brought it for brewing beer. When reading the hydrometer, look at the increment where the water level is. You'll notice in the picture that the water starts to come up towards the hydrometer. You actually want to read it just below that. So in this instance, instead of it being 1060, it is actually 1062. Now don't waste the test tube, but don't tip it back into the fermenter. You can use this bit and taste it yourself and see what the sweetness of the beer is going to be like. The next and final step will be adding the yeast to the wort. For some yeasts you need to rehydrate them, but for the granular yeasts all you need to do is sprinkle it on top of your wort, close the lid and let it go. Now it's time to wait. Put the fermenter in a nice place that has an even temperature, say around 18 degrees, and let it sit there for 10 days. After 10 days, take a sample and check the specific gravity and find out how many sugars have been converted into alcohol. If you're around 1018, then you're probably about the right time to stop and do the bottling. If you're not, just let it sit a little bit longer and retest it each day. If the gravity doesn't move any further over the next couple of days, then it's finished and it's time to bottle it up. If you're bottling, prime each bottle with a teaspoon of sugar. Now remember, stout's not meant to be that carbonated, but the sugar will help add that little bit of carbonation into the bottle. If you're kegging it, apply just the dispensing pressure of the CO2 to the keg. You don't want to over-carbonate the stout. Let it rest for two to four weeks, and then you should be ready to crack open your first stout. Hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, all the products you can pick up from Great Expectations or your local brew store, and I hope you enjoy making your stout.